From the TouchWise days to One UI 2.1, Samsung has improved a lot in terms of their user interface. The place where they have improved the most, at least according to me, is their camera app. From a jumbled mess of options to the slick viewfinder of today, let's take a look at the new Samsung camera app and see what they have to offer here in 2020. Hey guys, Omurta here from C4E Tech, and if you do end up enjoying this video, then please consider subscribing and turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get started. So I'm testing out the camera interface on Samsung's latest and greatest, the S20 Ultra. Now, if you are using any other Samsung device that's running on One UI, then the interface should pretty much be the same. The only change might be a few missing options here and there, as some of these are exclusive to Samsung flagships. With that said, let's jump right in with a look at the default photo viewfinder. So this is the layout, shutter button on the bottom flanked by the gallery to the left and the switch camera to the right. Up above, we have the different options lined up neatly and in the middle, we have the viewfinder. Of course, we can tap to focus anywhere. Tapping on the screen also brings up this exposure bar at the bottom that we can slide in to control the brightness of the scene. It's all pretty simple and straightforward. We can also swipe to change modes. These three leaf icons at the bottom represent our lenses. So the three leaves, that's our wide angle, the two is our primary, and the single leaf switches us over to telephoto. Oh, and one more thing, swiping down on the viewfinder flips us over to the selfie camera. Neat. Now, if we want to change how our photos are taken, then we'd have to take a look at these top buttons. Starting from the right, we have the settings cog. Clicking on that, first option here is the scene optimizer. This uses AI to recognize what we are shooting and optimizes metrics like colors and saturation. We can toggle it on and off from here. Personally, I prefer to leave it on most of the times. We can see it working right now. It's this blue colored icon here. Tapping on it turns it off as well. So here's a side by side with the scene optimizer switched on and off. Moving on, we have shot suggestion. It gives us some helpful tips on how to line up and frame shots. Generally, I have this turned off. Next, we have the wide angle selfie. So this switches to the wide angle framing when it recognizes more than one person in the frame. We can also manually toggle this through this icon at the bottom of the viewfinder. And finally, the last of the intelligent options, well, that lets us scan QR codes. Next up, under picture options, we can set what sliding the shutter button does. We can have it go into burst mode so the phone rapidly takes multiple shots and we can choose which one is the best shot later on. Or we can set it to create a GIF like this. And finally, here under save options, we can set it to having HEIF format photos. This lowers the size compared to regular JPEGs but can lead to compatibility problems. Samsung also gives us the option to save a raw copy of the image along with the JPEG. Great for photographers who want to tinker with their snaps on Lightroom or something similar later on. And finally, we have ultra-wide shape correction. We can use this to correct the barrel distortion that is apparent on some ultra-wide snaps. Next, we have the video settings, but we'll get to them in a bit. So let's now skip over and take a look at the other useful features. Auto HDR lets us switch off HDR. Unlike some other manufacturers, Samsung doesn't allow us to manually force HDR for a photograph. However, the Auto HDR works out great for most occasions. We have Selfie Tone that lets us adjust the color temperature of a selfie, tracking autofocus. That's great when we have a fast moving object in our frame and we want to keep it in focus throughout our shot. We can save our selfies as we saw them or flip them around through this option. And the last two options toggles grid lines and location tags. Pretty self-explanatory. We also have shooting methods here that lets us toggle how we want to use the volume keys. We can set them to function as shutter keys, zoom toggle, or just control system volume. We can also use our voice to shoot pictures or video, have a floating shutter button for ease of use, and show our palm to the selfie camera to click a snap. Getting out of settings, let's take a look at the other options. We can toggle the flash through here. Next, we can set up a timer for 2, 5 or 10 seconds. And the fourth one, well, this lets us change the aspect ratio. Now, since we have a 108 megapixel primary camera on the S20 Ultra, this is where we can set it to take pictures in the 108 megapixel mode. The other aspect ratios, well, they pretty much work as you'd expect them to. Next up, we have motion photo. This is similar to live photos in iOS. Captures a few seconds of video before and after we press the shutter button. In case we miss the moment, we can go through the video and find the perfect frame. And the last option in here lets us toggle on and off filters and beauty modes. 
Samsung has included a cool feature called My Filter in here, where we can take one of our previous photos and capture the same aesthetic as a custom filter. Anyway, the thing that I like the most here is that we have a one tap button to turn off beauty mode. Most other manufacturers have multiple sliders that we have to turn down. Okay, so moving on from the rear cameras to the selfie mode gives us a nice animation up top. The options though are basically the same, so we aren't really going into them here. Moving to the right, we have the video mode. So the arrangements remain the same. We can switch through lenses here and up top are all the shooting options. Let's take a look at what they are. Diving inside settings, we can choose what aspect ratio we shoot at. And depending on that, we have a few resolution options. Now, since this is the S20 Ultra, we can go up to 8K, but other phones, depending on their hardware as well as software combination, might be able to shoot up to 4K 60fps, 4K 30, or even 1080p, that's full HD video. Moving on to the next option, here we can set the aspect ratio for the selfie camera. And like I said, flagship device here, so we can capture up to 4K 60 through the front camera as well. Under advanced options, we can find HEVC video recording. So what this does is a record in the H.265 codec that saves storage compared to the older H.264 codec that is normally in use. Most modern devices do support H.265 decoding and with increasing file sizes for 8K as well as 4K footage, this might be a good option to toggle on. Now, we also have the option to record HDR10 plus video. And finally, we have mic zoom, which modifies what the mic will pick up depending on how much we are zoomed into the frame. Oh, and we also have the video stabilization toggle here. This toggles on and off EIS. OIS though, it's hardware level, so it's always on. Stepping out of the settings, we have the flash toggle. Next, we have super steady. Well, this uses the ultra wide angle lens along with really aggressive electronic image stabilization to smoothen out all the bumps and shakes in your footage. Now, super steady is great if you wanna shoot someone while you're moving, but when it comes to taking wide pans and stuff, it's better to depend on the regular EIS plus OIS combo, as sometimes super steady gives a jelly effect on the edges of the frame. We also have the aspect ratio toggle here, so we can change to 8K recording on the fly. The regular beauty and filters, they're here too. And we also have AR Doodle. It's mostly a gimmicky feature, but here's how it works. Let's now take a look at the other modes we have on here. First, we have live focus. This is Samsung's portrait mode, and we can shoot with two lenses here, the normal as well as the telephoto. Apart from that, we can also select the type of blur and the strength of the background bokeh through this slider. Both are accessed by tapping on this button. As for selfies, we pretty much have the same option. Now, one cool thing here is that Samsung lets us adjust the bokeh even after we have taken the image, like this. Moving on, we have the night mode for low light photography. Nothing much to control here, but one cool thing is that Samsung does show the shutter timing in this little dialog box here. Sweet. Now, since this is Samsung's premium offering, we have a full-fledged pro mode here. So we can control the ISO, the exposure, color saturation, and all that. Even the focus and the white balance too. We also get exposure compensation as well as exposure metering. It's almost like a full-blown professional camera. Now in a more budget offering like the M21 here, the pro mode is more deprecated. Like we have ISO, white balance, exposure compensation, and exposure metering, but that's about it. Another exclusive feature for flagships is the pro video mode. There's no 8K option here, only up to 4K 60, but we still get the granular controls that we had in the pro mode for photos. So everything from ISO, exposure, autofocus, white balance, and exposure compensation are all here. Let's now hop on over and take a look at some other modes that we have on here. Now up top, we have the options to go into Bixby Vision and AR Zone, but those aren't as interesting. So let's move on to the other shooting modes that we have on here. First is panorama. We can shoot both in landscape and in portrait, and Samsung lets us shoot with the ultra wide angle as well as the regular lens. Next, we have the food mode that lets us select a plate of food and have the focus entirely on it. The rest of the shot can be blurred using this toggle. We also get a handy toggle for switching the color temperature in here. Next, we have live focus video, which is basically portrait mode, but for video. Like before, we can choose the blur strength and type through this toggle. We also have the ability to record super slow-mo, that's 960 frames per second for one second at 720p. 
Well, that's something the S20 and S20 Plus can do. The S20 Ultra is surprisingly limited to 480 frames per second and it digitally interpolates the frames to 960 frames per second. We can manually record or we can set up this square and it starts recording as soon as motion is detected. In case we want to take a longer shot, then there is regular slow motion that's 240fps at full HD resolution. Finally, we have the hyperlapse option. The cool thing here is that we got super steady with it. So here's a handheld hyperlapse that we have recorded. And we can also choose how sped up we want the footage to be. Along with that, we also have a night hyperlapse mode that should be awesome for recording light streaks from cars, although a tripod would be necessary for that. Okay, now if any of these extra modes are super useful for you, then you can pull them down here by hitting this pencil icon or just dragging and dropping. We can also rearrange them in whatever order we want. Cool, right? Well, that's about it for the complete tour of the Samsung camera app. We have a lot of features here and for a stock camera app, this is very robust with a fully decked out pro mode for pictures as well as video. I like the layout, it's simple, it makes sense and the features. So what I mean by that is, well, let's take zooming for example. Till 10x zoom, the S20 Ultra just uses the primary camera. So I would like to have a visual indicator of which lens is being used. Same for super steady. Both the wide and the tighter framing here uses the ultra wide camera. So once more, I'd like some visual indicator for that. And that's about it for this video. Let us know in the comments below how you felt about it. As always, if you did end up liking this video, then please hit the like button, share, subscribe and all that. And oh, turn on notifications by hitting the bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for sticking around till the end guys. Have a good one. Cheers.